हेलो गाइस वेलकम टू माय चैनल केमिकल डायरी टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू कवर यू अबाउट द एक्सटेंडेड पार्ट ऑफ सल्फर रिकवरी यूनिट इन लास्ट वीडियो यू हैव सीन अबाउट दैट सल्फर रिकवरी यूनिट एंड आफ्टर दैट सल्फर रिकवरी यूनिट सल्फर इज कलेक्टेड इन लिक्विड इन लिक्विड फॉर्म इन सल्फर स्टोरेज एरिया सो आफ्टर दैट what we will do how we process and how we store so today you are going to learn about sulfur granulation and there are so many methods that uh, we store sulfur you will see those in another video so today i am going to cover about uh, sulfur granulation so this how we utilize sulfur so you have seen that uh, from sws aru and tgtu uh we get h2s and after that we burn in sulfur furnace or you can say dick uh, what uh, close furnace and after furnace we will send to sulfur uh, so close reactor after that we get uh, sulfur so, so sulfur we get in liquid form but you know guys uh, storing sulfur in liquid form is a really critical task why because uh, the they need to be continuous system for that and store storing sulfur transporting from one place to other it's really very hectic and typical job why because sulfur once uh, below 130 below below 100 degrees sulfur solidify and becomes hard so it may block the line and block the tanks and this is very difficult one so for that reason uh, this is the best solution to make uh, sulfur Uh, store in a granule form so today you are going to about the you are going to learn about the sulfur gra granulation unit and this is the granulator we say granulator so you are going to see about this you can store uh, and transfer sulfur transport sulfur from two form one is liquid and another is uh, granules or prillings or pellets or small types of tablets or uh, like that so this is the very best method where you need not to store it in energy form or you need not to supply continuous energy and you will be relax when you transport from one place to and it's very good method to transport or to keep in storage and you can keep this in ambient temperature you need not to maintain any kind of temperature pressure for this but uh, the things we face here is sulfur dust that must be covered by cyclone separator and many things so today i will give you one series of the things how it's done so let's start so this is the overview which i draw drawn pfd for you guys so sulfur is uh, transfer either in drumming or you can see this is the what i can say conveyor and goes to the silos so you have two options for storing you can uh, drum pellets in the drum or you can send it trans uh, silos and from here you, it will be transported by ship car rail car or about uh, tanker it's all depending upon the uh, production net quantity you produce in your company everything is depend upon the how much you, sulfur you produce and how much capacity of your unit so let's start so have a look of the pfd then i will start step by step so you um, this this cover all pfd and guys if you want this pfd you can comment me in the message box then i will send you the pfd okay let's start so last video you have seen that uh, we get uh, sulfur from different condenser so after that uh, you have seen that sulfur is processes uh, tgtu and whatever the liquid sulfur is get is get collected will be sent to the liquid storage tank or this is called uh, such tank a storage tank so liquid sulfur will be here and the color which i mention in exactly this is this would be the color of liquid sulfur when it turns into solid and this color will be like this so uh, i make a picture correctly exactly when sulfur become dry it it color will be like this but when sulfur in liquid form it become its color appearance will be like this so this is about the liquid sulfur uh, so the condition of the liquid sulfur is like that and you know that 
to store this liquid saltation tank we need to have continuous supply of steam if we don't supply the steam the lines will get choked and the tanker completely will become solid and you know it will be very very difficult and handling situation of sulfur and uh, how we maintain the temperature the cheapest way is to maintain the temperature via steam in this tank inside we will have steam coils jacketed uh, with steam and all the lines are steam jacketed lines even walls and uh, even pump is also steam jacketed uh, so we, we use submerged pump or ratchet pump or uh, like a vertical any type of pump you can use depending upon the design but the pump casing uh, what you can say pump inlet outlet all these are special pump designed for the sulfur and maintaining sulfur temperature is also important because <clears throat> as temperature increases or decreases viscosity of the sulfur also increases and vapor formation and uh, if uh, if you maintain low temperature sulfur will death solidify if you maintain high temperature vapor generation and uh, viscosity of the sulfur get changes so it's better to maintain temperature in a range so let's go forward first you see the granulator this is the granulator and you can see this is the water bath and here you will have spray nozzles at uh, spray nozzles to spray the sulfur in in uh, bo in uh, what you can say circular form or pellets form or granules so many common definitions to say so this is about that and uh, here it is called storage of you can see a uh, chute in which uh, sulfur will be uh, rem uh, withdrawn from here to vibratory skin okay guys so here we have pump and uh, with the help of uh, pump we transfer with the help of pump we send sulfur to the top of the and here we have uh, spray nozzles i did not mention in the drawing uh, but you, you must understand that here we have spray nozzles so many spray nozzles so what's happened here the sulfur sulfur will get uh, will spray in the water and once it goes into into the water a temperature reduces a temperature reduces and the cold temperature of water make sulfur into a solid form how same like uh, you know when you uh, liquidify the candle wax it will become liquid form once you put it on the outside at room temperature it will become solid so if you want in different shape like in home the we take one sieves or i can say uh, just take a what i can say wax liquid in liquid form and pour it in the, in the water so whatever the shape you put it will become like this so this is the same phenomenon like that i'm giving an example of wax that uh, generally we do experiment in home when we were in childhood so same like this so we will have sulfur here and a spray nozzle so once the spray nozzle the it uh, distributes sulfur in uniform way in in water bath once it comes here you you can see that it become a spherical form circular here here it get collected and all the sulfur will get collected here why and this is called weight wall it work on the weight you know if uh, we, we, we will set up some exact amount of weight at this wall when the weight increases this wall will open and sulfur we go to the vibratory screen this is called a vibratory screen after that sulfur will be withdrawn from here and this design is very perfectly uh, for the for, so that water should not grass should not ingress in this you have seen that a sulfur is getting accumulated here 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 all this sulfur is in pellets form or granule form so all the sulfur will get collected here once sulfur you know the density of sulfur is more compared to the water so sulfur is collected and very little amount of water will be there and um, mostly water will be stored here so if there is a continuous uh, wall will be a continuous flow will be there then what happen all the water will go so it's so when sulfur settle here water will will be on top so weight wall fun the function of the weight wall is like that so you have seen that here and you know whatever the water is here 
its temperature increases why because uh, the the temperature of sulfur will be more than 130 more than 120 so when sulfur will uh, will go in water bath so it temperature increases so we have to reduce the temperature of water because if temperature of water will be more then we will not get sulfur in accurate shape what we want so it's better to uh, what cool down the temperature for that reason we have one more water tank in which water from here will come here and with the help of pump it will circulate and it goes through the PHE plate type heat exchanger and uh, in plate time heat heat exchanger one end cold water another end it will the return will be cooling water return um, will be hot water so cold water uh, so hot water will come to the tank and it go to the pump and with the help of point go to the plate type heat exchanger after heat exchanger cold water again will go to here so we maintain uh, lowest possible temperature so we maintain accurate temperature so that water should not get uh, uh, water should not get heated so for this reason we circulate water continuously so we circulate con continuously uh, this is called granulator granulator in some company granulator is used whereas in some company uh, rolling machine is used or we can say granule uh, granulation rotating drum uh, rotating drum exactly some company use granulator some company use rotating drum and some of the company uses uh, different type of uh, conveyor system so first of all i will explain you about this then later i will go for other first we will cover this so you have seen liquid sulfur come with the help of form here and we will have here uh, spray nozzle spray nozzle or spray or a spray screen in which which give the exact accurate shape of the pellets we want in the product form so after that uh, screen it goes to the whatever the sulfur slowly slowly this the small balls or the balls up to you what type of mesh size you want and how much you want it's uh, all depend upon your product if you if you want the product of uh, 20 mm or 30 mm or 10 it's uh, so you will put a spray nozzle for that shape or a screen for that so it's a it's depending upon the design of your product or your requirement so whatever the liquid pellets is uh, separated here will cool down and will get collected here all the things will be collected here uh, once it get collected here it will be collected and you see uh, water water will be up and all the sulfur will be down so very only i can say that uh, particles are wet or uh, some amount of water will be there so here it will come this is called the weight wall here you have seen that so many types of control wall like uh, level control wall pressure control wall flow control wall temperature control wall so this is a new for you where we use that it is considered as weight wall once the weight of the weight of the product increases it opens when reduces this will close same it act uh, or continuously like uh, pneumatic walls so depending upon that it opens so after that what happen w weight wall open and w all the sulfur well uh, whatever the sulfur comes here and drawn into the vibratory screen this is the continuous process uh, there's a continuous process we take continuously so weight come here once uh, the weight will reduce again the wall will close and again these things uh, what co sulfur collection same process continue so we so now just now i've explained you about the granulator it's very easy and simple so now let's go for the remaining after a granulator what will happen now you are going to see so you have seen that uh, whatever the sulfur pellets or granule or tablets or uh, you can say that uh, uh, oval shape of sulfur or circular shape of sulfur we get collected here so here we have vibratory screen and the screen separates the sulfur in different form because the, our desired uh, our desired shape what we have given in the nozzle we must have and uh, if, if the size is below of our uh, desired shape then it will get uh, removed in the vibratory screen and in inside we have a cyclone separator to avoid the dust so after that whatever the things are collected sulfur are collected here and vibratory skin continuously vibrate and after once it's vibration and sulfur is withdrawn to the conveyor belt 
conveyor belt or another option we have is that we can send it to the drumming section so sulfur is collected and uh, from the one type of conveyor this this shows about the conveyor and uh, with this conveyor the sulfur will uh, sulfur will collected in drums and it pack and uh, we will we will seal the drum and we will send for the storage so this is the drumming now you are going to see about the silos you have seen that sulfur is collected in vibratory skin and whatever the water is collected will be filtered and will be sent back for the storage and uh, the sulfur what is collected whatever the sulfur which is not desired again will be sent it to the <coughs> liquid sulfur storage and this sulfur again utilized so it means we are wasting nothing but the thing is important is thing that we should maintain in clean and tidy form if there is a dust then dust sulfur will get come here and whatever the dust will get collected and may choke your pump lines or strainer so it's better to keep the area neat and clean and good housekeeping is important in this area and so much uh, dust will be produced okay so just now you have seen about the drumming section with the help of con conveyor after vibratory skin so vibratory skin we have different types of uh, mesh so according to the company capacity production we will use different types of mesh so after that you have seen that uh, in vibratory screen whatever the sulfur is separated desired one will be transported to the drumming section and desired one uh, desired one will be sent to the this is called I'm going to show you about this, this is the conveyor so you are seeing that uh, from sulfur whatever the desired shape is collected in vibratory skin will get transported automatically to the conveyor belt and conveyor belt will transfer sulfur in, in the form of bucket and this bucket will get collected and these are withdrawn and once this bucket get uh, what I can say when turn all the sulfur will get collected in hopper this is called hopper and after hopper it goes to the silos and from silos is go to the tanker now you will go this is the overview now I will show you deeply so the function of vibratory screen is to remove water and undersized particle and oversized particle and uh, accurate particle see of all the oversize or undersize or powder will get separated and will be sent back to the liquid storage in which uh, we will melt it again and we will send to the granulator and after that uh, whatever the required size will send to the conveyor belt so oversize will be collected and will send to the drumming and whatever the undersize will be sent to the liquid storage tank for uh, again use uh, for for you for using again and after that whatever the desired product will get collected in the conveyor belt you see this continuous process all the sulfur will get collected here all the sulfur will get will go and, and will get collected and the slowly 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 will come here and this this will have an rv type wall so sulfur will not uh, get withdrawn from here so slowly 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 it will come here after that whatever the sulfur is get will get collected here and after that once this bucket get reverse the sulfur is with sulfur pellets are withdrawn and again this will come back empty buckets will come back and it will collect sulfur and full bucket will come and withdraw sulfur here again empty bucket will go to the here and again sulfur pellets get collected and again will go here so this is this top portion is called hopper and these are called silos there will be so many silos depending upon the company production capacity i have mentioned too in the diagram for your easy understanding and cyclone separator will be here which collect continuously dust of the sulfur and you know this this sulfur dust is very dangerous to the human health so that's why we need to maintain cyclone separator and uh, respiratory you may get respiratory illness in that so it's better to use uh, mass for this so let's uh, come to the topic so all the sulfur will get collected in the hoppers so when this uh, bin is full when the silos is full this hopper will get transported via chain and it will be here so it will be sent these are stationary but this hopper is uh, 
um, this is uh, f uh, this hopper is flexible so uh, all this thing will be collected once this size is when this uh, silos are full so when um, and this will be transported for to the other department either the department or for the as a product so here tanker or train or rail cart pusher cart or different types of uh, or shipping so from here the tanker will come and it will be transported here so this is the end of the sulfur granulation which i have drawn here but uh, i would like to tell you about the another method using different company so you will not get uh, what i can say that you, you you will not get confused for this reason i'm explaining you i'm explaining you well in this diagram i can explain you to here we have used granulator but uh, some other plant what they use simply there will be there will be conveyor belt and in which water will flow and what they do uh, they simply spray the sulfur in the water bath so whatever the sulfur get collected will be here and after that uh, the conveyor the, the elevation of the conveyor belt will be more compared to the bottom so whatever the water will get drained and after that uh, what's happened that uh, sulfur will go and it go to the drying unit where with the help of air sulfur will be dried and again same they will use this conveyor belt like this to transfer into to, into the hopper this is second method now i'm going to tell you about the third method some company uses some company uses uh, rotating drum what there is that rotating drum is about it is just like a, what can I can say a hammer mill or a rotating drum in which drum move continuously there is one uh, you know we have pump there is one rotor and one is one stationary shaft so there will be a stationary pipe in which sulfur will go continuously and uh, sulfur go continuously and uh, drum rotate continuously with the water so when this liquid uh, when the liquid sulfur is spray on water it get uh, it melt down and cooled it it cooled down sorry not melt it cooled down and become pellets and that rotating drum continuously move and uh, cooling water will get continuously moved so it moves continuously and in the in the water the pellets move with the help of water rotating and uh, pellets will withdrawn from the rotating drum and all that rotating drum uh, pellets will get collected in a uh, screens where water is removed and uh, after that sulfur is uh, removed and it's sent to the conveyor belt where water is further removed and uh, cooling or air drying after air drying it go to the storage capacity and where we store so this is about the third method so i have experience about this three or four method which i have explained you but uh, depending upon the company and vendor requirement or depending upon the plant selection different people use different types of granulator so this is the granulator where sulfur we where we granulate the sulfur in a pellets or granules or tablets form so this is about the sulfur granulation so I, I can say this is the end of uh, sulfur recovery unit sulfur recovery unit consists uh, of the units like uh, sour water stripper amine regeneration unit and tear gas treating unit and sulfur storage and this is the called sulfur granulation this is the end of sulfur and this is the best method to store the sulfur for long shelf life so this is the this is about and uh, you and one more thing i want to say that uh, important thing is that here sul cyclone separator which reduces the dust so this is all about the sulfur granulation and in another video i will cover um, what sulfur storage and handling so you will in my channel you will see about the complete uh, downstream like uh, aru sws sru tgtu hydro treating and sulfur uh, what sulfur storage sulfur granulation so this uh, my channel will completely cover the most of the units of the sulfur recovery unit which are involved so if you have any doubts or you need any pfd of this uh, drawing you can just comment me on comment box i will send you on your email so this is about the sulfur granulation thank you subscribe to my channel